So let me run this presentation about the HL symbol and the model to operate the symmetric schemes over prime fields. Um, the motivation of this work requires a design of uh, symmetric primitives over prime fields that are efficient in several applications like uh, multiparty computation, polymorphic encryption, or um, zero knowledge. Now, depending on the application we target, we need a uh, different symmetric primitive, like for example, uh, in some cases we need a pure app, a random function, in some cases we need a spider, or in some cases we need uh, a niche function. However, all these uh, applications have some uh, things in common, um, in particular the fact that um, this application usually works over a prime fields, where p is a large prime integer. So, Usually, so this is uh, of order 2 to the power of 128 or 2 to the power of 256, or even Now, um, to the size of this prime, the nonlinear layer of the symmetric primitive that we designed for P is efficient in this application cannot be recomputed or stored as local tables. Um, this is quite different from traditional schemes like uh, ADS or Keshek. Um, in such a case, the S box uh, is usually defined over a small binary field, like over 8 bit or 5 bits, and so the S box can be potentially pre computed as a as local table. Here it's very easy to understand that due to the size of the prime, this is, not, uh, this is absolutely not possible. This means that um, uh, the symmetric primitive design for this kind of application, uh, in particular the, the nonlinear layer of these uh, symmetric primitives, have a simple algebraic expression, must have a simple algebraic expression, because um, the um, linear must be completed on the fly. Uh, for example, in many cases, these uh, nonlinear layer are just parameters. Now, um, in this paper, we consider the possibility to uh, set up a permutation over prime fields, which are defined either via the agent symbol or the module to operate that. And um, beside, uh, besides presenting many permutations over primitives defined in this way, we also analyze the security of symmetric uh, primitives that are instantiated uh, via such nonlinear layer. In particular, we propose uh, a generic attack on a symmetric primitive whose nonlinear layer is defined via the HL symbol and or the model to operator. And we propose a concrete attack, uh, a concrete primitive attack on this one function Brandeis which has been uh, recently proposed on Ethernet. So the first part of, the, of this uh, presentation, in this first part of this uh, presentation, I'm going to present uh, uh, several implementations that we propose in the paper that are set up in the symbol for the model to variable. And in the second part of this presentation, I'm going to present um, the um, attack that I just uh, mentioned. First of all, let me recall what uh, the Ishan symbol is. So we have, um, so we have p that is a uh, prime integer, we assume that p is at least three. The Hessian symbol is as the finest of function from fp to uh, into minus one, zero, or one. So fp is the, um, the, the fields of integer modulo p. And the Hessian symbol returns zero, if the input is zero. It returns minus one if um, the input um, is a non quadratic receiver um, modulo p. So if uh, um, x is always different from z square, which is that in fp, and it returns 1 if um, the input is a quadratic receiver module p. So this means that there exists uh, y such that x is equal to y square. Um, the Asian symbol can also be defined um, as a power map, where the exponent is p minus 1 half. Now, the Asian symbol have, uh, has many properties. I just recall uh, a few of them. Uh, first of all, if we have x and y which are equal to p, then the Asian symbol of x is equal to the Asian symbol of y. And um, second, and um, most important for the following, the Asian symbol of the product is equal to the product of the Asian symbol. Now, the first function I'm going to present is this one. Uh, we have x in input uh, and the function return x to the power of d times alpha plus the Asian symbol of x. Um, it is possible to prove that this function is invertible if these two assumptions are satisfied. So first of all, t is a um, positive integer, which is co-prime with p minus 1. And second, alpha, alpha, square, uh, alpha square minus 1 is uh, a quadratic receiver, modulo p, uh, 
uh, which also means that um, a Lichard symbol of alpha minus 1 is equal to the Lichard symbol of alpha plus 1. Um, just to give a concrete example, uh, if B is equal to 1 modulo 4, we can just uh, fix alpha equal to 0. Now, why this function is invertible? Well, let's say that um, uh, y is the output of this function. It's easy to note that um, y is equal to 0 if and only if the input is equal to 0. If this is not the case, um, let's compute the Hessian symbol of the output. Now, by using the uh, properties of the Hessian symbol, the Hessian symbol of the product is equal to the product of the Hessian symbol. And now, b is uh, uh, an odd integer, so the Asian symbol of x to the power of t is just equal to the Asian symbol of x. And uh, here we have the Asian symbol of alpha plus the Asian symbol of x. If x is different from 0, this quantity is either minus 1 or 1, but we don't care because by assumption the Asian symbol of alpha minus 1 is equal to the Asian symbol of alpha plus 1. So we can easily invert this function. Um, so the inverse is given by this expression where uh, the, power map, the power map um, is invertible um, due to this uh, condition. Um, okay, so I just say that if um, alpha is equal to 0, then this permutation is invertible, only in the case in which uh, b is equal to 1 modulo 4. However, we can mix this uh, function O is invertible by changing the assumption on b. So this function is um, similar as before, but now the inverted heat is guaranteed if uh, this condition is satisfied. So if p plus p minus 1 alpha is co prime with p minus 1. Um, the reason is very simple. This function is just uh, a power max with uh, this exponent, and the inverted heat of this, of this uh, power max is uh, uh, guaranteed by this condition. Now, this function has been proposed for uh, graduates, so we are going to do, uh, we are going to study this in the following week. Um, at the moment, I just would like to uh, highlight these results that we proved in the paper. So, if t is equal to 1 modulo 4, then d is always equal to d prime, where d prime is just a, a positive integer that is co prime with p minus 1. And this basically follows from um, this result. If p is equal to 3 modulo 4, then uh, d is equal to 2 times d prime, where again d prime is uh, co prime with p minus 1. Um, so if p is equal to 1 modulo 4, then d is always uh, an odd integer. If p is equal to 3 modulo 4, then d is always an even integer if you want to guarantee that this function is invertible. Now, another function that we propose in the paper is uh, this one. Um, so basically, it is a power map, but where the exponent depends on the Asian symbol of the input. So this function returns 0 if the input is equal to 0. It returns x to the power of t plus if the Asian symbol of the input is equal to 1, and, the, and it returns x to the power of t minus if the Asian symbol of the input is equal to minus 1. Um, this is the algebraic expression of this function, and um, it's very easy to prove that this function is invertible if uh, t plus and t minus are co prime with t minus 1. Um, the reason is very simple the Asian symbol of the input is equal to the Asian symbol of the output, uh, and the power maps are invertible. Uh, if this condition is satisfied. Now, this function makes sense if t plus is equal to, uh, is different from t minus, uh, but in such a case, um, um, the function can be, or I mean, a symmetric uh, primitive that is instantiated with this function, can be potentially broken via a side channel or folded tux. And the reason is that um, depending on the input, uh, we are going to compute two different uh, power mass, which I mean, with, with a different cost. So um, depending on the cost, we can recover some information about the input. Now, in the paper, we propose uh, um, other uh, functions that are set up uh, using the Asian symbol. So if you are interested, I refer to the paper. Uh, we also studied the uh, statistical and the algebraic properties of all the functions that we propose in the paper. So I just would like to uh, we call some of these uh, properties for the function that I just proposed. So in this table, we have uh, uh, the function that I just mentioned, the condition for the inverted PD, um, some consideration about the maximum differential permit, and some consideration about the algebraic properties. So let's start with the algebraic properties. 
the July court is always referred to the preliminary presentation of the function. And um, in all these cases, we have that um, uh, the preliminary representation is sparse and that the degree of the function is i, uh, is p minus 1 alpha uh, plus uh, sub e. Um, the reason of this is very simple. Um, the Lejeune symbol is a power, is a power map, so uh, we can immediately reduce that the preliminary representation is sparse and that the degree is uh, related to the degree of the Lejeune symbol. What about the statistical properties? Um, in this case, we have to um, analyze two cases. Um, so let's take this function or well, any of these three functions and let's fix the Lejeune symbol or let's remove the Lejeune symbol. If the degree of the obtained function is at least 2, then the maximum differential probability is a constant divided by p. And since p is very large, this means that we have a good maximum differential probability. If the degree of the obtained function is 1, then um, um, the maximum differential probability is 1 half. And we expect that because, for example, in this case, we have uh, something that is basically a linear function. So this is an overview for the statistical and the algebraic properties for the function uh, set up in the Lejeune symbol. Let's now consider some permutations set up in the module operator. And the first one that I'm going to present is very simple, but I think it's very elegant. Um, I think everyone uh, knows that the square map is not a quadratic residual module P because x squared is equal to minus x uh, to the power of 2. However, we can easily modif we can slightly modify this function in order to get something that is impractical. And then it is very simple. If x, if the input is equal to 0 modulo 2, then we return x squared. If x is equal to 1 modulo 2, then we return alpha times x squared, where alpha is a number of residual modulo p. So the notation symbol of alpha is equal to minus 1. So the function is x squared times alpha to the power of x modulo 2. Um, so in this way, we, we get a function that is invertible. Now, um, I would like to show why the function is invertible. I think it's a quite uh, interesting parameter. And in order to do this, we prove that the function is injective. So uh, if f of x is equal to f of y, uh, this implies x equal to y. Uh, we work with a finite phase, so injective implies that the function is Bijective, so we get invertibility. So first of all, we know that the output is equal to zero if and only if the input is equal to zero. So from now on, I assume that uh, the input of this function is different from zero. And now um, let's consider this case. Uh, let's assume that f of x is equal to alpha times x squared and f of y is equal to y squared, or vice versa. So this happens if x is equal to uh, 1 modulo 2 and y is equal to 0 modulo 2. But now it's easy to observe that this equality never goes because on the right hand side we have a square modulo p and on the left hand side we have a no quadratic residual modulo p. Remember that alpha is a no quadratic residual. So this situation can never occur. And this means that uh, if f of x is equal to f of y, then x modulo 2 is equal to y modulo 2. Now let's denote um, z, this model, uh, which is either 0 or 1, doesn't make any difference. Um, so f of x equal to f of y imply this equality. So alpha to the power of z times x squared is equal to alpha to the power of z times y squared, which means that x is just uh, is equal to plus or minus y. But now if, f, if x is equal to 0 modulo p, modulo 2, then minus x, which is equal to p minus x, is equal to 1 modulo 2. And again, this is not possible because um, this equality implies that um, x modulo 2 is equal to 1 modulo 2. Uh, and so this implies that um, the function is injective and so uh, invertible. Now, uh, what about the algebraic properties of this uh, function? Well, in the paper we proved that um, the preliminary representation of this function is given by uh, this polynomial, where we have um, um, this function that is uh, an odd function, so you can observe that the exponent uh, are just uh, odd integer, plus a single monomial of uh, uh, degree 2, 
where the coefficient of this monomial is 1 plus alpha e by the power 2. Now, as you can observe, this function can be potentially dense and could be of maximum degree. So we consider several values of alpha and we try to evaluate the, um, the density of this function for these uh, different values of alpha. For example, um, this is an example for alpha equal to minus 1. Uh, so in this case, this coefficient is equal to 0, so we have another function. Uh, here we have um, uh, several values of p that we test, and here we have uh, uh, the number of monomials. So in blue, we have the expected number of monomials for uh, another function, and in red, the uh, real number of the concrete number of monomials of uh, this function. And as you can observe, um, the two lines are very, very close. And then by experiment, we check that um, the function is basically always of maximum degree. So the dry properties of this function are quite uh, nice. Uh, but let's analyze uh, uh, this case alpha equal to minus 1 in what it is. Um, so in this case, the function is invertible if uh, p is equal to 3 modulo 4. And the reason is that we need that minus 1 is uh, a non quadratic residual modulo p. Um, so in this case, we have the function minus 1 to the power of x modulo 2 times x squared. But what I want to emphasize is that uh, in this particular case, we don't have to complete the modulo 2 operator. Um, so this function is just minus 1 to the power of x times x squared. Um, and this different representation could be easier to compute in some of the, uh, in some applications. Moreover, if we um, slightly change this function, we have something that is always invertible. Um, so if you consider the function minus 1 to the power of x squared times x, then this function is always invertible. And the reason is very simple. Uh, let's just take the output of this function. The square of this output is equal to the square of the input, which means that x is equal to minus 1 to the power of y squared times y. Um, and again, we can slightly define this function. For example, we can uh, set up this function, so minus 1 to the power of x squared times x to the power of d, which is invertible if um, d is co prime with p minus 1. Um, as before, let us have a quick look about the algebraic and the statistical properties of this function. Um, now, in this case, if we consider the algebraic properties, we have that all these three functions are dense and uh, usually of maximum degree. So with respect to the uh, function set up with a very jump symbol, we have um, um, bad algebraic properties because in this case the function are dense, while I remember that in the last case the function were uh, sparse. Now regarding the maximum differential probability, um, we have seen the result to before. So again, if we are going to fix uh, the module 2 operator, um, then if the resulting function is degree 1, then the maximum differential probability is basically 1. If the degree is at least 2 or bigger, then the maximum differential probability is a constant divided by t, where, again, this p is very large. So, um, in general, we get those uh, good statistical properties. So we have several permutations over p, which have uh, good statistical property and good algebraic properties. So we can, we can see that if we set up a semantic primitive, we can see it with one of these permutations, uh, we could then um, um, achieve good security. However, there is a problem, and the problem is the following. The number of possible output of the Asian symbol or uh, the module two operator is very, very small compared to the size of P. For example, the Asian symbol return just three output, minus one, zero, one, which I mean basically is just minus one and one because zero uh, occurs in it only in the case in which we put it zero. And the module two operator is just zero or one. So we have two output compared to P possible input, where I P is very large. So how can we break, how can we potentially break a uh, primitive setup with this uh, function? Well, the idea is to fix all the Gaussian symbol and the module 2 operator. If the algebraic representation of the scheme has no degree, we can potentially try to break the scheme via some algebraic attacks. In more details, let's consider a symmetric primitive, which could, could be a cipher, a PRF, a H function, or whatever. Uh, we fix all possible Gaussian symbol and uh, all the module 
to function and we construct a system of equation for such fixed values. Uh, in the system of equation, the variable could be, for example, the key for the cipher, could be the image for the hash function, or whatever. Uh, if the system of equation has no degree, we can potentially try to solve it, down, solve it via uh, some algebraic techniques, like, for example, factorization, neutral basis, or group finding technique. And um, given the solution, we check if the find uh, if the found solution satisfies the HL symbol or the model two um, functions that we fix in the first level. If this if, if this is the case, then uh, we find uh, we found the solution of the system. So we found, for example, the key or the image, depending on the on the primitive. If not, we just repeat uh, the process. Um, so that's the idea. And uh, let's have a concrete uh, example of this uh, attack. And the example that we'd like to target uh, that we consider in the paper is uh, Prandtl. Um, Prandtl is a sponge hash function which is instantiated via uh, an iterative permutation over fp to the n, where the n function is defined in this way. So we have um, constant addition, the linear layer is defined as the multiplication via the NPF via NPS matrix. And the Xbox is defined as a product between x to the power of d and the h symbol of the input, where I remember that d e, um, must be chosen such that this function is invertible. Um, so, in this case, we would fix all these relational symbols. We consider the system of equation that uh, rate the input of the hash with the output of the hash, and we try to solve this uh, uh, system of equation. Uh, if the solution satisfies all these relations, we will then we really form uh, upper image. Now, in our particular case, um, we have an hash value in FP and we look for upper image of this form. So, x concatenated with x prime, where x prime is fixed. So, the system of equation is actually just one equation in one variable that links the input with the output of the sponge. For solving this equation, we can just use a root finding approach whose uh, cost is proportional to the degree of the equation that we want to solve. And in such a case, the degree of the equation is d to the power of r, where r is the number of rounds and d is the degree of the defined as those. So this is one and d. Um, so just, uh, before presenting our result, I would like to point out that uh, a similar attack uh, uh, strategy has been proposed by Grand Designer. Um, with a D, but uh, there is a difference. In our case, we consider a single equation that links the input with the output. So we have a single variable, a single equation, but in general, I agree. Uh, in the case of the designer, um, um, they work over a uh, random level, which means um, um, they have many equations, they have many variables, but each one of these equations has a um, low degree. Um, so in such a case, you are forced to use, for example, a coronavirus approach, uh, which means, uh, and as you to show, more expensive even if all these equations are uh, lower degree. So let's have a look at our concrete result. So let's consider Prandtl, the target of security level of 128 bits, and what I is uh, to the power of 256. Um, these are different uh, instances of Prandtl. So D is the degree of the S box, for example, 2, 3, 5, and so on. And N is the number of words that compose uh, the state. The state. This is the number of rounds proposed by the designer already with the security matching. And these are the number of rounds that we're able to attack using the attack that we uh, just proposed. And this is uh, our recommendation for the number of rounds with the same security matching proposed by the designer. And this number of rounds. Um, include both the task that we propose here and some other uh, observation that we made in the paper uh, regarding probabilistic uh, attacks. So as you can observe, if um, D and N uh, are large, then we can break uh, um, quite many more rounds than the, uh, the ones proposed by the design. For example, if D is equal to 2 and N is equal to 12, then we can just break one more round. But um, if D is equal to 5 and N is equal to 8, we can break 4 more rounds, where the initial round is 6. And so uh, here you can see that the recommended number of rounds in some cases is uh, uh, present. Um, they have an increment of 
Okay, so to summarize, uh, in this paper we propose a uh, um, certain permutation of a variety with a simple algebraic expression that are set up in the regional symbol and the model to operator. Um, just like point out that these two operators are not defined by the primary fields, so, um, the primary fields are allows for a uh, uh, new idea, new direction of research. So that, that's, I think it's a really interesting uh, message. Um, the result of our analysis shown that um, yeah, so we can we can set up uh, new functions um, using approach that are not possible on the binary field, but uh, we should be careful when using such such functions because uh, new attacks are also possible. Um, so this is um, interesting, I think. And um, finally, we'd like to leave an open problem for future research. Um, so in this paper, we just propose some like permutation, and we consider the security of our scheme is achieved with uh, this permutation set up the relation symbol or the module operator. But we actually never consider the efficiency of this uh, function or of a primitive set up with, uh, associated with uh, one of the functions proposed in this paper. Um, so as an open problem, it would be really interesting to understand um, if um, uh, such as just a, such as symmetric primitive could be compatible in uh, multi-part computation, free mode filtration, or uh, zero knowledge applications. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention, and um, I hope to see you in class.